Air pressure and wind. That's what the weather is really all about. So let's see how. We got to start with air pressure. We all know that the equator is always warm and the north and south poles are always cold. The Earth's weather is driven by these differences in temperature. Here's how. The sun's radiation heats the ground. Sun's radiation is energy from the sun that travels through space. It, this radiation touches the ground and changes into heat. Because we're at the bottom of the atmosphere, air is being pushed down against the ground. This air touching the ground gets warmed up. The ground is warm, the air touches the ground, and it gets warmed up. So the heat is being transferred to the air by a process called conduction. Conduction. Warm air is less dense, and it begins to rise. As this warm air rises, there's now space for more air to replace it. So the warm air goes up, there's a, an area down there to, near the ground where there's no air. Well, we can't have that, so cold air, which is heavier than warm air, so it sinks down and replaces the warm rising air. This cold air is now touching the warm ground, so it gets warm and it begins to rise. So warm air creates areas of low pressure. On a weather map, low pressure is shown as a red L. So let's kind of go back over that. The sun's radiation touches the ground, heats the ground up. The sun's radiation heats the ground. Air touching this warm ground gets warmed up. This warm air begins to rise. As the warm air rises, colder air, which is more dense, sinks down and touches the ground. It touches the ground, it gets warmed up, and it begins to rise. So, Cold air is denser than warm air, so it causes high pressure. Cold air has lots more molecules in the same area. The molecules are packed more densely together, so they weigh more. High pressure is represented by a blue H. And when I see the blue H, I think of heavy air. Heavy, cold air causes high pressure. As the warm air rises in the atmosphere, Warm air molecules touch other molecules of air and start to warm them up. This process is called convection. So the sun's radiation warms up the ground. Cold air touches the ground and gets warmed up by conduction. As the warm air rises in the atmosphere, it helps warm other air in the atmosphere through convection. So convection is a circulation of heat through a liquid or a gas, and since the atmosphere is a gas, we have convection. Rising warm air and sinking cold air causes differences in air pressure. The air is moving, and another name for moving air is wind. The wind is caused by differences in air pressure. Now this weather map shows an area of high pressure and two areas of low pressure. So up in here we would have cold, dry air, which would be heavy. Down here we have warm, moist air, which is going to be low pressure. Now, this area of blue, what I call teeth, this is a cold front down moving further away from here, but that's something else we'll talk about later. This picture, this diagram, shows us how the wind is formed. Okay, let's see the, the ground over here. This has been heated up by radiation, so this is from the sun. This ground is warm. The air touching the ground gets heated up, and it begins to rise. Now, since we've got an area of low pressure over here, where there's not very many air molecules, and over here we got sinking cold air, high pressure, this high pressure pushes in to this area of low pressure. And since this is moving air, that's what we said the wind is. So we have radiation heated up the ground, air touching the ground, gets heated up through conduction, it rises up, and as it rises up it touches other air molecules, and we have convection. So this falling air and rising air is moving air, which causes the wind. Now we have several pieces of equipment that we use for weather forecasting. We can judge the wind speed by something called an anemometer. 
it spins and tells how many so many spins per minute and we have a that helps us figure out what the speed of the wind is over here we have a barometer a barometer measures air pressure how heavy is the air like we said high pressure is heavier it's going to cause it's cold dry air cold dry air is heavy warm moist air weighs less so that would be low pressure Here's something that we see on top of buildings sometimes. It's called a wind vane. Uh, it shows the direction that the wind is coming from. And that's an important word, from. Winds are named for the direction that they come from. A north wind would be coming from the north. A westerly wind would be coming from the west. The wind is pointing to the E, so this wind is an east wind. So what causes the wind? Now, I know I've already told you this, but this is so important to understand the weather. What causes wind? Differences in air pressure. The differences in air pressure are caused by the unequal heating of the Earth's surfaces. Now, there's something that is important. Unequal heating of the Earth's surfaces. The equator gets more direct radiation from the sun than the north and south poles, so it's warmer. Another important fact is that land heats up and cools off quicker than water. Water keeps heat longer than land. During the day, land may be hotter than nearby water, but at night that water will still be warm. This difference in temperature between land and water also causes differences in air pressure, which causes more wind. Air pressure and density. Cold air is dense and heavy. Warm air is less dense and not as heavy. Now, density means the amount of molecules in an area or an object. So if we look over here, we see this cold air has a lot more molecules. They're more tightly or densely packed together than over here in this warm area. Warm air, uh, warm air molecules are spread out with more space between the molecules. Cold air is also drier than warm air. And the reason for that is because water vapor needs space to fit into. Warm air has space for these water molecules. Cold air doesn't have. So cold air is dense and dry, cold and dry. Warm air is spread out and has space for more molecules. So high pressure is cold and dry. Low pressure is warm and wet. Now I don't know about you, but I prefer warm, moist air because it just feels nice. So let's talk about something. Air pressure and density. Cold, dense air pushes the warm air out of its way. When we have a cold front with lots of wind, it's because the cold, dense air is shoving the warm air out of the way. Cold air is also drier than warm air. Cold air does not produce clouds. Warm air can hold more water vapor. Water vapor is also less dense in cold air. So here's what goes on. Warm air, is, as warm air is rising, it goes up into the atmosphere. As it goes up, it takes this water vapor higher and higher in the sky. When this water vapor gets high enough in the sky, it begins to cool off somewhat. And we know that cool air causes condensation. Clouds begin to form as the air and water vapor begin to cool. Clouds are formed by warm, moist, rising air. Okay, here's a quick recap. In a high pressure area, air will what? Sink, because the air is more dense. This is because the air is cold and sinks. Therefore, clouds cannot form. In a high pressure area, clouds cannot form. In a low pressure area, air will rise, because the air is less dense. This is because the air is warm and rises. Therefore, clouds are likely to form. So we understand the basics of how wind is caused. Wind is caused by moving air, which is differences in air pressure. Well, there are different kinds of winds. Um, the jet streams are very high-speed winds found in the upper troposphere. Now, we know the troposphere is the layer of the atmosphere that we live in. Now, these jet streams... They act like fences that separate cold, dry air from the polar regions from the warmer air found near the equator. 
The position of the jet stream can affect whether we have nice weather or very cold weather. Jet streams also help move storms across the United States. In this picture, it shows that the jet stream is way up north, okay, near the northern part of the United States. This allows the warm air, the warm moist air coming up from the, especially in our area, from the Gulf Coast area, this warm moist air is allowed to move upward because the jet stream, the fence is up here so the warm air can move up. So the jet stream is very important. Uh, in the wintertime, it's what causes us to either have really, really seriously cold weather or mild weather. And in the summertime, it can affect whether we have really, really, really cool, dry, I mean, whether it's really dry, hot and dry, or whether it's warm and moist and we have lots of rain. Down here in the south, we like to go to the beach. And sea breezes and land breezes are something that we may be familiar with, but just don't realize it. So let's talk about a land breeze and a sea breeze. Earlier I mentioned the, the difference in heating and cooling of land and water, how land heats up and cools off quicker than water does. That's what causes this. During the day, land heats up more quickly than the water. This causes the air over the land to rise, leaving space for the cooler air from the ocean to move in over the land. The cool air moving in from the ocean causes a sea breeze. It's coming from the sea. Now at night, the land cools off very quickly, so it's now cooler than the ocean. Since the ocean is still warm, the air over the ocean is rising. The cooler air from the cool land now moves out to sea to replace the rising warm air. This causes a land breeze. There's another wind called the westerlies. These are global winds that usually move the weather across the United States. Our weather almost always comes from the west. If it's raining in Alabama today, then it might be raining here tomorrow. Now here's a couple of diagrams. All right, in the top diagram, we have a land breeze. The land heats up really hot because as we all know, you don't go walking across the sand at the beach during the middle of the day. You don't walk. Here's a couple of diagrams that's going to help us understand sea breezes and land breezes. In this top diagram, we have a sea breeze. And it's called a sea breeze because the air is moving in from the sea. During the day, as we all very well know, the land gets really hot. You certainly don't want to go walking across the sand or a parking lot down here in the south during a summer day because the land is so hot. So the sun's radiation has come down and touched the ground, making the ground get really, really hot. The air touching this ground touches the ground, and that's conduction. Heat gets transferred from the ground to the air. The air being warm begins to rise. This rising warm air leaves an area of low pressure. The ocean is cooler, so the air is going to be denser. This cool, dense air is going to come over to the land where it's going to touch the ground and it's going to begin to rise. So this constant rising of warm air, slowly cooling and sinking, the cool air denser comes in, gets warm, so we have a circulation of air, and since it's coming from the sea, we call it a sea breeze. At night, we have the opposite. At night, the land cools off really quick, so the ocean water is a little bit warmer. So now at night, we have warm air over the ocean rising, going up, cooling, sinking, going into the, coming to the, to over the land. As it drops in, this cooler air from the land comes out to the ocean, and we call that a land breeze. Okay, here in this picture, uh, this is a diagram of a sea breeze. Show your teacher where the high and low pressure areas would be found, and explain why this is a sea breeze. This is a good little quiz. So get your teacher to come over and explain this to them. Just press the pause button on the movie while you do this. Let's do that again. Now this time with a land breeze. Call your teacher over, pause the movie, and explain to them where the high and low pressure areas would be and what causes this to be a land breeze. All right, how about a quick review? Cold air is dense and heavy. There's not much space between the air molecules for water vapor or humidity. Cold air is dry and heavy and causes high pressure does not form many clouds. 
Warm air is less dense. It causes low pressure. Lots of space for water vapor. Warm air can be very humid. Warm air rises, taking this water vapor with it, and forms clouds. The wind is caused by differences in air pressure. Air moves from areas of high pressure into areas of low pressure. Cold air pushes warm air out of its way. So some important terms to remember. Radiation, that's how the sun's energy touches the, travels through space and heats up the ground. Conduction is where the cold air touches the warm ground and the warm ground heats up the air. Convection is where this warm air rises up through the air and as it bumps into other molecules, it transfers the heat to them. Land breezes, sea breezes, we've talked about. Jet streams is that really high speed wind which is way up in the troposphere that helps separate cold air masses from warm air masses. Westerlies is one of the global winds that travels around the earth and in our case it carries weather and storms across the United States. Anemometer measures wind speed. Wind vane tells us the direction of the wind. Barometer measures air pressure. Air pressure and wind, unequal heating of the earth's surfaces. Um, that's what we've talked about, the unequal heating of the earth's surfaces. Land uh, heats up and cools off very quickly. Water heats up and cools off very slowly, which causes a difference in temperature. And air pressure causes the wind.